So depending upon your dog and its level of sensitivity, we may fit the collar in different areas around the neck, but the location will generally be the same. So the, dog, the, the collar will go high up on the dog's neck above its flat collar or training collar, but it will be behind the back of the jawbone. So one of the areas, if you put it too high in the neck, it will actually make contact with the jawline and create interference. So we want it just south uh, or down from that location so that it fits either in the muscle group or directly over the throat. There's two reasons that we would change position. One is if a dog is extremely sensitive to stimulation, and many dogs are very, very sensitive to it. If we place it directly over the throat, there's less muscle tissue there, and it's primarily skin and nerves. They will be less affected by stimulation than they are if it's in a major muscle group on either the left or right side. So if a dog is not affected by stimulation and is a little bit stronger or less sensitive, then if we put it into a major muscle group on the left or right side of the neck, south of the baseline of the ear, then we have good contact and the dog will feel the sensation at lower levels. So if during a session your dog initially doesn't feel it very well, but then all of a sudden becomes very sensitive to it, you can make an audible, adjust it from the side of the neck to the center over the throat. The contact points are spread an inch and a quarter apart so it will clear both sides of the larynx slash trachea and your dog will now be less sensitive because it's in a spot that is not as affected by stimulation as it is on the side. So you can make adjustments throughout. So the, the collar should be fit to a degree that it does not shift on the dog's neck when it shakes its head. Uh, if it scratches it, it may move just a little bit, but I want to barely be able to get my fingers between the dog's skin and the contact points. If the dog drops its head down and the contact points come off the skin, it is obviously too loose. If the dog is up here and I hear breathing affected, where when it breathes out I hear, it's obviously too tight. Uh, most owners will think that the collar is fairly snug. Wow, is that going to be okay? My answer to that is yes, because I don't want it to move and therefore I have a reliable sensation whenever I, whenever I apply stimulation to the dog. Level selection, it, it varies. This is a, a very difficult subject to just talk about and often easier uh, to demonstrate. So when we're working a dog, we're initially trying to set the dog's level, the level of perception. At what point does my dog become aware that there's a sensation there that it hasn't yet felt before. So I'm looking for an initial indication, a twitch of the ear, a lift of the head, a close of the mouth, a freeze or a refrain from movement, um, or it starts to stare at the ground is, what is that, where did that come from? That's a level of perception. And sometimes that can become a working level or an education level. But often what happens is once the dog becomes aware of it and it realizes that it's not necessarily bothering it, it's not causing it worry or concern, then the level may go up just a little bit. That's generally what I call the education level. That's the level that I'm going to work at most of the time uh, as my dog progresses through training. And again, it will be affected by distance. It will be affected by distraction. It will be affected by my dog's energy level. It will be affected by heat. So some dogs, when they are tired, the levels go up, while other dogs, when they're tired, the levels go down. So ultimately, regardless of how many levels the collar has, we only care about the level being too low, too high, or working. If it's too low, the dog is ignoring me and not paying attention, too high, and it's causing the dog to be worried or concerned. Uh, and you'll see often some significant movement in the dog uh, or a reaction. And if the dog level is just right, then what we have is a dog that is complying, changing its behavior, doing what we ask. The tail is still wagging, the head is still up, and the dog is doing it with energy and enthusiasm. So depending upon your dog and its level of sensitivity, we may fit the collar in different areas around the neck, but the location will generally be the same. So the dog, the, the collar will go high up on the dog's neck above its flat collar or training collar, but it will be behind the back of the jawbone. So one of the areas, 